HorseCity.com TV would like to thank the following companies for their support of this program. Winnie's Cookies, Zometric Gold from Marielle, Weaver Leather, Spalding Fly Predators, Main and Tail from Straight Arrow, Sundowner Trailers from Heart of Kentucky Trailers, and Equipride. Hello, I'm Alan Moorhead. And I'm Meredith Taylor. And welcome to HorseCity.com TV, your connection to the horse world. On today's show, we're going to put you in the saddle to take a look at some international training tips from Peru. We're at the barn, we're taking a behind the scenes look at the breeding facilities at Keaton Farms in Weatherford, Texas. Then we're at the clinic with Dr. Mike to discuss the importance of monitoring your horse's basic health vitals. And we'll wrap up our show when trainer Betsy Cowperthwaite puts you in the irons to go over the basics of harnessing your horse properly to take on the challenge of driving. All this and more today on HorseCity.com TV. In the performance arena or on the trail, if you're searching for the best looking, highest quality tack, look no farther than Weaver Leather brand tack and equip. Whether your ultimate rush comes from racing the clock or the solitary piece of a wooded trail, you'll find the style and substance you've been looking for at your local Weaver dealer. The hottest colors, the most exciting new styles, and durability you can always count on. One look and you'll see the difference. Weaver Leather products are available at your local tack store. You can find a dealer at 1-800-WEAVER-1. Winnie's Cookies has a sample waiting for you. Trainers, clinicians, and horse owners agree one of the reasons their horses look good and perform so well is because of Winnie's Cookies. Winnie's Cookies work. Not only are they organic and they've got, you know, all the essential things in them, but the horses absolutely love them. Winnie's Cookies is so sure that you and your horse will love their product, they want to send you a sample. Our phone number for your Winnie's Cookies sample pack is 866-946-6437. Winnie's Cookies works like a supplement, tastes like a treat. What standards do you set for your horse's health? Can you look them in the eye and say only the best? Why settle for silver or bronze when the gold's available? Symectrin Gold, the most comprehensive dewormer ever approved. Made by Mariel, Zymectrin Gold is approved to control more equine parasites than any other brand. So when treating your horse, go for the Zymectrin Gold, the gold standard in parasite control. Straight Arrow, makers of the original Mane and Tail product since 1970. Mane and Tail Shampoo is a protein-enriched, high-lathering, gentle pH balance formula that cleans without stripping natural oils. Finish up with Mane and Tail Conditioner. It nourishes, conditions, and maintains skin and coat to aid healthy hair growth. The original Mane and Tail products continue to set the grooming standard. Remember, a well-groomed horse leaves a lasting impression. More information is available on Straight Arrow's website. In the saddle. What we're going to do now is uh, explain you a little bit about the processing of Peruvian training. The way how I training is the traditional way that Peruvian using by learning from the family, from uh, uh, the fathers and grandfathers to the sons. Uh, one of my teachers, chief teacher was uh, Jose Alba. And that also was uh, teaching by it. his father, my grandfather, Daniel Alba. This uh, traditional way what we're learning from one to the another uh, uh, part of the family. Uh, where, where I'm going to start it is with a headset, the Peruvian style, that now is using a bit, where that horse is already finish in the process of training. Um, the, the main thing in the Peruvian training is to keep the horse smooth. The more smooth possible can be in the training process. To try to keep it smooth the horse, you have to try to burn less energy in the horse. This means the gate had to be in the less revolutions. You don't want the horse to burn his cell like gating short. You want the horse uh, 
useless revolutions and gate and long to cover the distance and cover the ground. The gate and different different and those horses is when he walk, he had the he put in the ground almost in the exactly time, these two sides, each size and each time, make it four beats. It's a little uh, uh, complicated uh, to look, but when you get used to build this kind of horses, it's going to, you're going to know how, the, how easy it is to, to keep in gate. Plus the gate is natural in these horses. It worked with the gate, it worked with the smooth. All we, all we had to do is to give the best in the, in the training process for the horses. Up next on HorseCity.com TV, we're at the barn with a behind the scenes look at the breeding facilities at Keaton Farms in Weatherford, Texas. Then we're at the clinic with Dr. Mike to discuss how to monitor your horse's basic health vitals. And we'll wrap up our show when trainer Betsy Cowperthwaite shows you how to harness your horse in the irons. We'll be right back. HorseCity.com TV. We're at the barn to walk through the breeding facilities at Keaton Farms in Weatherford, Texas. My name is Dr. Steve Bond. Uh, I'm recently the new resident veterinarian here at Keaton Farms. Uh, Don and Keith Goat hired me uh, to be the full-time veterinarian here on their uh, breeding farm. I practiced for 26 years in general practice, but my uh, primary interest was always reproduction, so I took the opportunity when they offered me a job to uh, accept a full-time job here uh, with primary emphasis being on their breeding program. We're going to give you a, a tour of uh, Keaton Farms uh, breeding facilities. Uh, we're going to start here in the stallion collection area, and of course anybody that's uh, familiar with artificial insemination realizes that this is a collection dummy. All of our stallions are uh, trained to breed an artificial uh, dummy. Uh, this room is only used to collect stallions in. We do that for a couple of reasons. The primary, primary one is that in order to meet sh uh, frozen semen uh, requirements to ship out of the country, uh, we have to have an area where these stallions come in and are not in contact with any of the other horses on the farm. Have to have uh, f a, st a fairly sterile environment that can be disinfected, so we've got this room uh, set up to collect our stallions, so this is where they come in and are collected. Then once we collect them, then we proceed to our lab and, of course, where we can process our semen. This is one of two labs. We're fortunate here to have two different laboratories. Uh, this is the lab where we bring our semen in once we collect it. And of course here we can analyze it, make sure that the motility and the concentration get, uh, is okay on the semen. Uh, so we process the semen both to breed mares on the farm here. And of course, like most big breeding farms, we ship a lot of cooled semen out of the state and to other uh, breeding operations in the area and this is where we process our cool semen, package it up, get ready for shipping. So that's primarily the job here. We also have a, a small pharmacy here where we uh, keep all of our drugs and stuff so they're right here available when we're working if we need them. From here we're going to go into the uh, palpation room where we uh, palpate our uh, mares on the farm. This is our uh, palpation room. This is where the mares come in, uh, are examined to see if they're ready to breed in heat. 
Uh, we've got two sets of stocks here, so we move the mares from the barn, bring them in here, are able to palpate them. Uh, if they need any type of treatment before they need bread, of course, we've got all of the facilities and the equipment to do that stuff here. Uh, so in the mornings after we collect, we generally palpate our mares, then we know which ones, of course, to breed, which ones that may need some treatment before they're ready to breed. Also, we do our embryo transfer, or flushes here. Uh, we bring our donor mares in here and uh, flush the embryos out of them. We're very fortunate. We've got another place where we palpate our recips. Uh, I like that a lot. It allows us not to have a lot of our recips coming in and out of here. It kind of lets us separate our uh, valuable donor mares and our on-farm breeding mares from this recip herd, and that works very nice for us. So uh, once we, if this would be a donor mare, for example, once we uh, flush the embryo out of her, then we go into our second lab here on the farm where we process the embryo. And this is our... Uh, embryo uh, lab here. This is where we, uh, once we flush a mare, this is where we bring the in and, and uh, obviously search for our embryo and then process it and get it ready to put in a recipient mare. Uh, so we're very fortunate that this lab is separate from the rest of the uh, facilities. Let's us do a very nice clean job of managing our embryos and stuff. Uh, the other thing we use this room for is to process our frozen semen. Uh, regulations uh, require us uh, to be able to process that, process that semen where you don't do a lot of other of your breeding stuff uh, to meet European and Australian requirements. So we're, uh, we bring our semen that we're going to freeze in here and put it through the process of, of uh, spinning it down, uh, diluting it, putting in it, loading it in the straws, uh, cooling it, and then freezing it and packaging it so that it's ready to be put in liquid nitrogen. And obviously then it can be stored and either used here on the farm in case of uh, emergency situation, shipped anywhere in the country, and uh, either shipped to Europe or Australia for uh, people that would like semen from one of our studs there. Up next on HorseCity.com TV, we're at the clinic with Dr. Mike to discuss basic horse health vitals and why they're important. And we'll wrap up our show when trainer Betsy Calperthwaite prepares a horse to go driving in the irons. We'll be right back. Welcome back to HorseCity.com TV. Ever have that day you wake up and just don't feel good? It happens with our horses as well. They've got ways to tell us, and we're going to discuss it today at the clinic. We're joined again with Dr. Louder. Dr. Louder, thanks for being here with us again today. Glad to be here, Alan. We're going to look at some simple things that we can do to tell if our horse is feeling well. Well, and first of all, visually, how's our horse going to tell us that he's feeling bad? Well, the first thing you want to do, if he's standing off by himself, does he look depressed? We know what he normally looks like. Is he off his feet? Is he not drinking? Things like that are going to let us know whether our horse is feeling well or not. So basically just understand the characteristics of your horse when they're feeling good can tell you when they're feeling bad. You bet. You got to know your horse. Now when we think about a horse feeling bad, uh, to, to keep from calling that vet too early, what are some of the things we need to look at to be able to tell the vet? Well, one of the first things you want to look at is this respiration. And the one way to do that is get yourself a watch with a second hand, stand back, Watch the barrel of the horse here, or you can watch his nostrils, either one, and you want to stand here and count for 15 seconds how many breaths this horse is going to take. It's going to be someplace in the neighborhood about four or five breaths every 15 seconds. We're going to multiply that by four and get our total number of breaths for a minute. Then once we've got that, we should know our horse should be someplace between 12 to 16 breaths per minute. So that's one of our deals that we count with respiration. We also want to count pulse. That's right. Two ways to do that. 
One way is to come up here in the big facial artery sitting right up under his jawbone here. Yes, we sir. fill that for 15 seconds. Again, we multiply it. We're looking someplace around eight or nine beats or pulse per 15 seconds, and we multiply that by four. And a horse is going to have someplace between 32 to 40 beats per minute. And then the second thing is buy a stethoscope. It doesn't have to be an expensive one, a cheap one. Put it on. We're going to go right behind the horse's elbow, right in here, slide it up under his elbow where his heart is at. And we're going to again listen for 15 seconds. We'll have some place in the neighborhood between seven and nine beats for 15 seconds. Multiply that by four, and we're going to be in that 32 to 36 beats per minute. Now, if your heart rate gets up there and gets elevated, that's where you want to start thinking about trouble. What would be an alarming heart rate that you'd want to make sure you tell your veterinarian about? If you've got a heart rate that starts getting above 48 beats per minute and your horse is standing there, you need to get your vet on the phone because something's going wrong. So if they're standing, sweating, and the heart rate's up, uh, with your stethoscope, there's another deal you can check as well on your horse. Is that the flanks in with the gut sounds? You bet. We're going to look at the gut sounds, and we're going to try to make their consistent both sides, top and lower. That's going to let us know if everything is moving inside. One of the last things we need to think about is also checking his mucous membrane color. How would well, you do that? Well, come up here, pull his lips back. Hold still, sweetie. There we go. And we'll press right here. Yeah. We'll press down, hold it for three seconds, and we'll see if it blanches out or not. If the color comes right back, you want to know if it's tacky, if it's moist. One of the last things you can do is pull up right here, check for skin turgors. This horse's skin, and you can see, pops right back. And that's where a normal horse should be. If you pull on that skin and it stands up, your horse is dehydrated, letting you know something. Something you may want to get the vet out there. When do you call the vet? I call the vet when my respiration's up, when my heart rate is up, my horse is depressed or going off feed. Let's get somebody on the phone. So it's all vital information that you can check for yourself to see if your horse is feeling bad before you even make that call to the veterinarian to see if he needs to come out. You bet. We're all, we're all human, and I'm just like anybody else. I like to ride my horse on the weekend, and I want to stay home, but I also want to come and help people. But I want to know that there's things that they can do to decide if I really need to come out at 10 o'clock on Sunday night or not. Thank you, Dr. Mike, for the information. That's going to be a way to save some folks some money and not having the vet come out and taking care of your horse. Up next on HorseCity.com TV, we'll wrap up our show with trainer Betsy Cowperthwaite harnessing a driving horse in the irons. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're going in the irons with trainer Betsy Calperthwaite as she shows the basic steps to harnessing your driving horse. Now we're going to talk about the harness. There are two basic types. One is the biothane harness, which is easy to clean. If your horse is hot, hot and sweaty, you just put them both under the hose and get the job done quickly. You have the britching, which stops at the carriage. You have the saddle, you have the breast collar, and you have the traces which pull the carriage. And of course you have the bit, uh, the bit and the bridle and your reins. This is the type of harness that I would recommend to the beginning driver because it is easy to care for and it's not so overwhelming as it may be if you were to get leather harness. Leather harness is generally fancier. It can, um, it's more tra traditional in the driving world. Harnessing the horse is much like putting a saddle and a bridle on a riding horse. The saddle goes on first. You do have the extra pieces. This is the crupper. This to me is really important. The reason that it's important is you have a buckle and in putting it under the tail you want to make sure that you always hold on to the buckle. Good 
good boy and pee. I started from that side, but I have to do the girth up on this side. The next piece of harness that you put on is the breast collar with the traces. The traces, as I mentioned before, are used to pull the carriage. Unfortunately, we're doing this on the wrong side, and I keep having to go to the other side. Back, back, good boy. As you see, I have been talking to him most of the time. He understands the word back. He understands the word step over, because in driving, you ha have to be able to talk to your horse. And another reason I love this harness is if it hits the ground, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> you then take the reins and put them through so that when you have, when you put the bridle on, you're ready to go. Now we're going to put the pony to the carriage. And at all times, you hold on to your reins. Even though I have a trusty helper at his head, you want to always be in control. I've put the shaft down. I will now take the trace and attach it to the carriage. Remember, the trace is what pulls the carriage. And now the bridging strap. And the bridging is what stops the carriage, even though this carriage has brakes. You want to make this fairly snug so that the carriage doesn't move around a lot. Okay, now I have the reins and we're ready to get on board. HorseCity.com TV would like to thank the following companies for their support of this program. Winnie's Cookies, Zometrin Gold from Marielle, Weaver Leather, Spalding Fly Predators, Main and Tail from Straight Arrow, Sundowner Trailers from Heart of Kentucky Trailers, and Equipride.